Hey guys, let's get a little refresher crash course of limits and continuity. So I think we're all set on the word continuous. Uh, continuous meaning that we can draw the function without lifting our pen off the paper. So uh, an example of something that's continuous, you know, anything that we can draw without having to lift our pen up off the paper. Now, if a function is discontinuous, we have three types of discontinuity. Jump, removable, and infinite discontinuity. And if we're looking at this picture, Um, if I have a jump discontinuity, it would be a place where the function jumps from one place to another. So as we see as we approach 4, the function jumps to a different part, to a different piece of the, of the graph. So this jump continuity here at x is equal to 4. There's removable discontinuity. Removable discontinuity can be thought of as like a hole in the graph. So we have removable discontinuity because there is no point when x is equal to 2, but we could remove that discontinuity by just filling in that hole. So we have removable discontinuity at x is equal to 2. And then infinite discontinuity. Infinite discontinuity is something where um, the functions are going to the two separate infinities. So infinite discontinuity would be at x is equal to 1. Now, the next thing after discontinuity is if the function is discontinuous, we try to find the limits. Uh, we have one-sided limits where we can approach an x value from one particular side. So, if we approach uh, 1 from the left, so as we go to 1 from the left, the function is going to negative infinity. As we go to 1 from the right, so now approach an x value, so we're getting as close to 1 as possible, but from the right, the function is going to infinity. Now, since these two things are not equal, we the limit as x goes to 1 does not exist. The limit as x goes to 2. So as we get as close to 2 as possible, as we get as close to 2 as possible from the left, it's going to this y value of 4. Now, there is no y value there, but the limit is 4. As we go to 2 from the right, same idea. We're getting as close to 2 as possible from the right side of 2. The limit as x goes to 2 from the right is also 4. Since these two things are equal, the limit as x goes to 2 is equal to 4. The limit as x goes to 4. Now, as we go to 4 from the left side, so values that are less than 4, the y value is going to 2. As we go to 4 from the right, the y values are going to 5. What's the limit as x goes to 4? Are these two things equal? So the limit does not exist. If a function is continuous, then the limit as x goes to a for every single a value that we can think of, of that function f, has to be equal to the y value. So looking at it graphically, if we take the limit as x goes to 2, so as I approach 2 from the left, from the right, the limit as x goes to 2, the limit as x goes to 2 of this function is equal to 1. Because no matter which way I approach 2, if I'm on the function, I'm going to a y value of 1. However, the y value, f of 2, is 3. So f of 2 is equal to 3. So these two things are not the same. So this would be an example of a function that is discontinuous because for every value of a, the limit as x goes to that, that x value, that a value, uh, the y values aren't the same. We have rules for limits as x goes to infinity. We compare the degrees. If we have a big over a little, and I'm talking about the degree, so 3 over 2. 3 is bigger than 2. If I have a larger degree in the numerator than I do in the denominator, then the limit as x goes to infinity is infinity. Now, it could be negative infinity, we could look at these SIGNs and see uh, if I get a positive over a positive, it's going to be positive. If we get a positive over a negative, then it would be negative. 
if my degree in the denominator is larger than the degree in the numerator, so the degree in the denominator here is 3, the degree in the numerator is 2, if I have a little over a big, well then as we go to infinity, the limit is going to go to 0. And then the last case is that if our degrees, the largest exponent, are equal, then we have to divide the quotients of the leading coefficient. So the leading coefficient is going to be negative 1. Here the leading coefficient is 1. Negative 1 divided by 1 is negative 1. We have limits as x goes to values that are not infinity. And the first thing that we try to do is we try to plug them in. So I'm going to try to plug in 3. I would get 3 minus 3 over 9 minus 6 minus 3, 0 over 0. Whenever we get 0 over 0, we have to do some more work. If it's polynomials, generally we want to factor. So the numerator factors as x minus 3, the denominator factors into two binomials, um, x minus 3, x plus 1. These x minus 3's cancel, so we're left with 1 over. Now that we've gotten that to cancel, 3 plus 1, 1 fourth. So we could not plug in 3 before because we were getting 0 over 0. But once we factor, we can cancel them out. And that uh, common factor that is going to cancel leaves us 1 in the numerator, x plus 1 in the denominator. Now we can plug in uh, 3. Mm -hmm. When we involve radicals, so let's take the limit as x goes to 0. Again, we always want to try and plug this in. So we'll plug in 0. Uh, the square root of the square root of 9 minus 3 is equal to 0, 3 minus 3. And then if I plug in 0 down here, again, we get 0 over 0. Now, the trick, if you want to call it that, when we work with radicals, is we want to rationalize. And it doesn't matter if we rationalize the numerator or the denominator, but we want to rationalize. So we're going to multiply this by the conjugate, the square root of x plus 9 plus 3 over the square root of x plus 9 plus 3. Now, in the numerator or in the part that you rationalize, the reason why we chose the conjugate is because when we multiply this out, all of that radical stuff in the middle is going to cancel. So we have the square root of x minus 9 times the square root of x, minus, x plus 9, rather. So we're left with x plus 9. All of that middle stuff, 3 times that radical minus 3 times that radical is going to cancel. And then we have negative 3 times a positive 3 minus 9 over. In the denominator, it's really going to be to our benefit if we do not distribute anything out in the denominator, but leave it as the product of the denominator times that conjugate. Now when we look at this, we get... 9 minus 9 in the numerator, so that cancels. We're left with an x over an x. This is going to cancel. 1 over. Now we can plug in 0 because we were getting that to cancel out. So the square root of 0 plus 9 plus 3 is equal to 1 over 3 plus 3, or 1 sixth. And lastly, wrapping it all together, is this function continuous? So if the function is continuous, the limit as x goes to 4, I'm sorry, I'm doing so good. The limit as x goes to 1 of f of x will equal f of 1. Well, the easy one to find is f of 1, because when x is equal to 1, the function is equal to 4. So f of 1 is equal to 4. And so we want to see, does the limit as x go to 1 equal 4? Well, if we try to plug in 1, so trying to plug in 1, 1, 1, we get 0 over 0. So the limit as x goes to 1 of, now, difference of two squares, x plus 1 times x minus 1 over x minus 1, 
these guys cancel, 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So the limit as x goes to 1 is equal to 2. 2 is not equal to 4. So is the function continuous? No. All right, guys. Have the best day ever.